Well, hey there. Thanks for joining me. This is Jessica for a family coach. Um, and today in this video, we're going to be talking about shock collars. I hate talking about shock collars because it's kind of a polarizing thing. Some people just think they're the world's greatest thing and others, others are like, we understand that they're not. Um, so thank you for joining me. If you can hear me, please go ahead and type in the comments that you can hear me. I would appreciate that. Make sure I didn't mess anything up because it's always possible. Um, <laughs> so, uh, thank you so much for joining me for this video. We're talking about just say no to shock collars. And, um, so shock collars, um, collars that, uh, they, there are some out there now that are called educator collars. Um, some of them provide like an electronic shock. Some of them make a noise. Some of them will like spray water up at your dog's face. Some of them will just provide like a vibration. Um, there are all kinds out there. Some of them will do like a, they, they, I think they call it like a static type. So they're trying to get around the word electric shock. So I think they call it like a static shock. Um, but any of them, no matter how they work, um, any of the shock collars, some of them are, like I was saying, the edu educator collars. Um, a lot of people call them e-collars for short, which is a bit confusing because we also call um, the Elizabethan collars e-collars. Um, so that can be a bit confusing to people. And those Elizabethan collars um, are the cones that we use um, that are, you know, that your vet may give you if you have your uh, surgery on an animal or, you know, they need to not lick somewhere. So that can be a bit confusing, but um, educator collars, they call them, they still provide a shock or some sort of pulse. Um, and they're not the best way to train your dog. Um, and I know there are people out there who are gonna disagree with that, but science has proven they are not the best way to train a dog. And why is that? That is because you're using pain and fear. Pain and fear. Um, think about you, think about your kids, think about um, friends, family members. Think about how you would react. Think about how your kids would or may have reacted to using fear and pain to try to teach a lesson. Um, it doesn't, it, it may, it may work in the short term to get them immediately to stop whatever it is they're doing that you don't want them to do. But in the long term, it doesn't work. But l first, let's talk about even though it may jolt them and, and get them to stop doing something in the moment, it's not humane. It's not a humane way to treat your animal. And there, there are two reasons why that's super important. One is because we don't have the right, you, me, any person does not have the right to hurt any other living being. We don't especially your family member, like your pet is your family. So you don't have the right to hurt or harm them. And it's, it, I mean, it's just not the right thing to do. So it's very, it's inhumane is what it is. And if you think about um, shock, using shock um, to, I'm, I'm thinking back to like the things that we can and can't do um, as human beings in like war. Is is that a war crime? Is it something okay to do to a prisoner from that you captured from another country? Even in the U.S., we've debated that, right? Like it's it's inhumane. It's it's torture. So why are we okay with doing this to our dogs? We shouldn't be. Um, the second thing is that you lose trust. So your dog, if you are harming, if you're hurting your dog, thinking you're doing the right thing or not to train them, 
you have lost your dog you have lost your dog's trust because they're I mean why wouldn't they trust you when you're hurting them so those are two of the biggest reasons off the bat not to use any type of shock or electronic collar, a collar that sprays, a collar that vibrates, um, any of that. Also those um, choke collars, the prong collars, those are also really painful and can and have done a lot of damage to a lot of dogs. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and roll that in here with the shock collars. Um, but also it's not the most effective way to train behavior modification. Um, and science has proven this in both canines and humans that the best way to change a behavior, to modify a behavior in a person or in a dog is through positive reinforcement. Because what you're doing with positive reinforcement is taking a behavior or an action and you are a, you're training the brain to associate that behavior or that action with something positive. Meaning your dog or your child or yourself, whoever um, is in need of behavior modification is going to on their own choose that action or behavior because they have positive associations with it. So for example, if you eat a Brussels sprout, you're like, yay, that was good for me. But if you eat a piece of chocolate, your brain is like, oh my goodness, that was friggin' delicious. Let's eat more of that, right? Because the chocolate <laughs> tells your brain you you actually like release endorphins it's proven by science that chocolate is addictive the sugar in it is addictive and your brain is you've trained you've now trained your brain to say oh i want that feeling again how did you get that feeling oh you ate chocolate let's do that again that's the same principle behind positive reinforcement behavior modification and training so in in and on the flip side of that, when we use pain and fear, we are forcing a change in behavior. We're forcing a, a change in activity or action in the moment. We are creating distrust and we're creating resentment. And at some point, your dog is going to say, I'm not putting up with this anymore. It may be in a day, it may be in a week, it may be in three years, but they will find that opening and say, I'm not putting up with this mistreatment any longer. I shouldn't have to, just as a person is going to say, I, I shouldn't have to live in fear and I shouldn't have to live in this oppressive state. So we do not want to use any type of force or um, pain to train act activity or behavior modification in our dogs, just like we don't wanna do that with other humans. Um, so that's really what I came on today to talk to you guys about. Thank you so much for being here and posting your comments. Um, using shock collars, um, educator collars, any type of, um, um, collar that's going to provide an interrupt via like pain or some sort of stimulus um, is absolutely not the right way to train a dog and it is just one of the myths of dog training that I talk about in my new ebook which I highly encourage you to go out and grab a copy of. It's seven miracle steps to train your dog. And I talk about, there's a bunch of different myths that a lot of people currently believe are true. And this is one of them. Um, and you should not do to train your dog. So go ahead and grab your copy. I'm gonna put it up the link here, bit.ly slash seven steps dog training. Let's see if I can get that in the frame there. Um, thank you so much for typing that in. I really appreciate it. So go ahead and grab your copy. Um, it's the entire foundation, everything I teach my in-home customers, setting you up, you and your dog, on the right path for positive reinforcement 
in training and behavior modification. Um, go ahead and grab your copy. It's super cheap, like five bucks. <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong. Um, and this is just one of the myths I talk about. Shock collars. You don't need them. Stop using them. If you have one or if you know somebody that has one, throw it away. <laughs> Please, I beg of you, throw it away. Um, and yeah, so if you have any questions or comments, anything at all, dog behavior, dog training, um, even if it has to do with your cats, I can a lot of times help there. Um, nutrition with your dogs or cats, I love talking about that. Um, go ahead and post them in the comments and I will be thrilled to answer that question for you. I might even make a video for you to answer your question. So with that, um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the wonderful comments. I appreciate it. Um, this is what I'm here for. I'm here to help you guys out. So make sure you leave your questions and comments below. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.